the headlines. May 28th, Victory Day marks at Oromia level. North Korea's Kim Jong-un on Trump summit. Hello everyone, welcome to Amanu Kali with the news of the day. President of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, Dr. Mlad Teshome, said the government is working to respond to questions of the public step by step. He wants to work day in and day out to ensure peace and security of the country. Forgot Brown the story. President of Ethiopia, Dr. Mulat Shoma, has delivered a congratulatory speech on the 27th victory of May 28th to all Ethiopian people. Dr. Mulat stressed that the main objective of his government is sustaining the victory of May 28th through implementing federal system and widening political space in order to fulfill public demands. The president said the support that they have been getting from their people can help them as additional tool to sustain the victory. He also called on for their peace to continue to start development. Aum balle uta chaba jo neta ya garachin neta mangist mangistachin what we are looking now tangibly is that our government has got public support. This can help us expand the victory of peace. So understanding this, we should work on peace as it is crucial for our economic development. Therefore, I call upon all Ethiopians to be for sustainable peace and stability. President Dr. Mulatu urged that the federal system that the country has been using played a great role in uniting citizens to eradicate poverty. He underscored that even though the country couldn't fully come out of poverty, it has been registering remarkable results. Bagumbot Hadil Manashanet, Yejemmer no Agarai Dasi Malkamashara. With the initial victory of May 28th, what we have started on the country's reform can be exemplary for the other African countries. Besides keeping our peace, we have been participating on the peacekeeping mission of our continent in general and uh, neighbors in particular. Dr. Mulato notes that the peaceful power transfer in the country would help other African countries learn good lessons to strengthen their democracy. Ethiopia became a federal state after 991 victory and now has got nine regional states and two city administrations. The May 28th Victory Day has been more from a level with panel discussion here in Adama Town. Those can blood reports. The 27th anniversary of May 28th will be marked on a level with Natadama Abagade Conference Hall. The day has been celebrated in the presence of public representatives of Abagadas, religious leaders, scholars, and high government officials. On the event, head of the European Construction Bureau, Shimalis Abdisa, has presented a paper on the benefit of federalism and discussed by the participants of the event. The participants have raised various questions based on the presented paper. <laughs> I want to ask you one question. Is reform stopped or continued? Means is that only at high level? In my opinion, it should be got to district and cabal level. President of the Oromia Regional States, Lema Magrasafor Ispar, said that the country has benefited a lot from the federal system. <laughs> Sirnati Waldagan, Sirnati Waldendan, Sirnati Good day, Governor Major. 
ጸብረ ደበሬ ሙርቲ ዳን ሃርጊሲ ስኑ ትገለሜ ወጀታማ ጀር as regional and federal governments encouraging work have already been started on talking so many tangible works have been seen on the ground now a large number of political prisoners have been released for your surprise only in the last few years the oromia state government has released more than 40000 prisoners this is for the sake of widening the political space of the country and to show our patience so it is a big decision the president also said that the may 28th victory day would be celebrated with a result gain so far may 28th victory day marked for the regime and new chapter has been opened for Ethiopians to prosper their language values and, and history as well and thus being celebrated for the 27th time vice president of the Oromia region state Ayiba said the government would work with great commitment to strengthen the police force the Oromia police college has graduated police force for the 26th time where the remark came out let Teresa at the story the Ormia Police College has graduated 6,494 police forces. It had training with police science for 26 rounds. On the graduation ceremony, Vice President of the Ormia Regional State, Aiba Hansen, has granted a award for the graduates who scored high result. Aiba underlined that the regional government would make necessary support to capacitate police forces. <laughs> Since police mission needs high commitment and ethics as well as honesty, so as to keep a pace and stability of the public, the Oromia regional government would work with due attention on this issue continuously. The government would sustain its support in giving additional training, logistics, and others. It would also exert efforts to modernize and scale up its capacity. She said she called on the graduates to serve the society with high commitment using the awareness they got from from the training in their stay. I call on all of you to discharge your responsibility to ensure peace in the region. You have to work hard using the knowledge you have gained, she said. Commissioner General of Oromia Police, Malaku Fanta, for his part said, the college has graduated so many police members with certificates and diploma at different times. The commissioner noted that works are underway to offer training for police members in B degree. This regular police and professional the number of graduates has increased from time to time it is expected from all of us to work hard more than any other time to maintain the gained victory there are so many organs who need to survive victory we must confront them we should work tirelessly to both our Assistant Commissioner Tamrat Abba said 493 of the graduates are Correctional Center's police. Some graduates vowed that they were ready to serve the public with dedication. I received enough training. I hope I will serve my society. Oromia, the largest and most populous region in Ethiopia. Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock says uh, it expects to reap or harvest 374 million quintals in this harvest season. And the ministry called on farmers to fight against America's fall army war that would decrease and damage productivity. Let us raise again as more. Last year in Ethiopia, four army war has destroyed various cereal crops, including maize. As the data from Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock show, the war affected 35% of crops production in some regions of the country and 5% of national GDP. In this year, the fall army war has also been harming agriculture production developed on 87,000 hectares of land through irrigation. Director General for Plant Protection with the Ministry of Dosal to warn that the warming may affect this summer season production. Some of the warmers entered the country from abroad. 
But this year there is a worm which propagated in the irrigation production starting from spring season. Besides this, other worms are entered the country from Kenya, Uganda, of the worms. He said the ministry is working on five preventive methods through formulating five-year strategy, adding concerted efforts are being exerted to properly prevent the worm. Zabdo suggests that spraying chemical is the last preventive measure. The director urged the farmers to plow their plot of land frequently as well as avoid weeds. <laughs> Farming land where the worm occurred last year should be plowed properly, since the worm lays its egg in the soil when there is no plowing. It is important to plow the land and expose its egg to sunlight and air. In this way, it is possible to reduce the number of the worms as much as possible. Killing one egg of the worm means killing about 2,000 small worms. Accordingly, the farmers should clear weeds from their plot and it is environs. Zabdos said that the worm never disappears because of rain. He urged the farmers to be aware and fight against the prevalence of the worm cooperatively. The farmers must combat the worm by farming a group of 20 or 30 farmers or being in neighborhood. It is not easy to fight the worm being alone, even as a district, zone, or region. We must work together cooperatively as Africa. The American fall army worm, the most dangerous and uh, damages uh, corn and was first uh, observed in uh, Shabe Sombo area in Jima and then went to southern regions, uh, regional states of Ethiopia and people are working to uh, stop this uh, dangerous worm and to increase productivity. Deputy Speaker of Jaffe Oromia, Mahbuba Adam, says industries should be eco-friendly to get and bring achieve that intended goal of the sector. A relevant discussion has been held with stakeholders here in Adama town. Sorry, Chaka Banicha. Oromia State University declared that only 2.5% of industries are providing conducive environment for the employees. From 34 industry in the region studied, the university conducted a research on the working environment of the industry running in the region. The study revealed that almost all industries in the region have dealt with problems like low salaries of employees and a weak security for them. The presented study revealed that only 2.3% of the industries are providing the service they are expected to offer for the society, and 65% of them don't care about environmental impacts they are bringing. Some participants of the discussion asked the issues to be improved. <laughs> We appreciate the investment, but almost all of the problems raised here are problems of government, and I called upon all the concerned bodies to end the problem. President of Oromia State University, Nugusita Desa said, concerned bodies have to work attentively to overcome the problems. All the participants of this discussion, legislative bodies, industry owners, experts, and the media institutions, I call upon you to contribute your own share in overcoming the problem with industries in the region, he said. Head of Oromia Government Communication Affairs Bureau, Dr. Negari Lent on Sparta said the problem is getting worse due to lack of implementing the policies on the issues by the government sector and he said that it has to be improved very soon. Investment in Nabratatala. We appreciate the investment, but almost all of the problems raised here are problems of government and I called upon all the concerned bodies to end the problem. Welcome back now to the news from abroad. The leader of North Korea, 
is willing to join and meet uh, President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, in Singapore as per their plan. He uh, said he intended and fixed will that the summit with the U.S. President Donald Trump goes ahead. This followed a surprise meeting on Saturday between Mr. Kim and the South Moon Jae-in, who said the North was committed to denuclearization. Mr. Trump had canceled the 12th June summit, citing the North's hostility. But on Saturday, he said that the date has been changed and that things were moving along very nicely. The summit will be the culmination of diplomatic efforts that began this year to try to defuse what had threatened to become a military confrontation between the nuclear armed communist north and the south and its U.S. ally. South Korean President Moon Jae-in said he and Mr. Kim had agreed that the 12th June summit should be held successfully and that the North Korean leader had had again made clear his commitment to a complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. But Mr. Moon suggested Mr. Kim was not certain whether Washington could guarantee the stability of his regime. The BBC reported. More than half a century that the Korean Peninsula was divided into two, the North and South, the parallel 38th. Now things are moving in a peaceful side. The DMZ, the military zone, is going to be broken. Probably unification might come. Who knows? Politics is there. Thanks for watching. Have a good time. Up next comes a special program about this discussion Prime Minister Dr. Abe Ahmed and President of the Romanian State, Lama Magersa, held with residents of the Mbidolo town. And there, uh, University of the Mbidolo was also inaugurated. Bye-bye.